week three, if I'm not mistaken. Is it? Are we in week three? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to start with quartile division today on week three. And this is another part of uh, measure of dispersion. We have covered uh, the first or the simplest method of quartile a measure of uh, dispersion that is entitled range. Yeah, that's the most simplest one, the easiest, and uh, basically it's the simplest because you only take the highest at minus with the smallest value from the data, and then you can get the range. And that value is used to to measure the, the data, how much does it clustered away from the value of the mean? How much is the range in those data by just considering the highest and the smallest? Now, the next one that we're going to do today is the measure of dispersion is called quartile division. And basically, uh, what we do here is we're going to divide um, the data into four parts. So in a way, uh, quartile division is much more, uh, how do you say, more specific compared to range. Yeah, uh, Because of the disadvantage of range, we can use quartile div division because when we use quartile division, we are not going to focus on the extreme values only. I mean, we're not going to focus on the highest and the lowest value, which are normally considered the extreme values. Yeah. So to calculate the eta, uh, the quartile division, there is a formula that you need to remember. Uh, this formula is not given in the exam uh, because it's quite simple. And some more this semester is still open book. And it's simply uh, given as interquartile range Q3 minus Q1. And that's what we're going to find out. What is Q3 and what is Q1? Now, quartile division is another uh, formula, which is simply you divide the interquartile range to become uh, divided by two. So. Um, one thing about quartile division is that it has another name, which is called semi-interquartile range. So the question may ask, quartile division, or sometimes the question may ask, semi-interquartile range. It is the same meaning, right? So the formula is simply just dividing the interquartile range by two. Yeah. So as what you have seen here now, uh, the formulas, what is Q3? And what is Q1? And Q1 and Q3 is basically first quartile and third quartile. And, and I mentioned just now about dividing the, the data into four parts. So in a way, uh, Q1, first quartile, represent Q1, first quartile, lower quartile, it represents the 25% of the data. And third quartile, Q3, also known as upper quartile, is representing 75% of the data. So that's what I meant by dividing them into four equal parts, whereby we know that a quarter, 25%, below the first quartile, and then another quarter, another 25%, above the third quartile. Whereas in between the below 25% and above 25%, we have a balance of 50% in the whole data, 100%, for example. Those 50% directly in the middle is the median, actually. So in a way, uh, your median is actually Q2. Yeah, so um, this is an illustration of it, which you have it in your notes. You can see the diagram below. 
you see 25, 25, 25, 25 percent all contribute to 100 percent. So basically, the Q2 yeah, is representing the median. It is 50 percent. If you remember or if you recall uh, last week when we did the median, uh, to calculate the median from the cumulative frequency, we take the 50th position. Yeah, The N we divide by 2. So basically Q2 is the median, Q1 is the lower quartile or the first quartile, Q3 is the upper quartile or third quartile. And as what you see here, it's the first quartile, the formula is 1 over 4 N plus 1 value. Q2 for median, as you can see here, is 1 over 2 N plus 1. We have uh, covered this formula last week and upper quartile q3 3 over 4 n plus 1 value and just like what i've explained to you earlier the interquartile range or short form as iqr q3 minus q1 and semi interquartile range is basically the quartile division q3 minus q1 divided by 2. now if you look at the formula and if you recall when we did the median last week that the n when you plus one it is referring to ungrouped data yeah that means the data are considered raw data small number of data so this formula is in reference to raw data or small number of data uh, data that is less than 15 uh, data yeah so um this is just to make sure you understand that n plus 1 yeah, is referring to the, uh, what do you call that, um, raw data, small number of data. Yeah? So I hope this is clear. Yes? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Now, this is a simple example on example 15. Yeah? And here we want to find the lower quartile, upper quartile, and quartile division for just a few data here. And as you can see, our N is seven. There's only seven data here. And in order to find the lower quartile, it is very important to again arrange it in ascending order, meaning from the smallest to the biggest. And it's already arranged to you for you in blue color and from here for q1 because our n is seven so we have uh, seven plus one divided by four because remember q1 is n plus one divided by four so when you calculate this you get two now two is not your q1 okay q1 is where you need to refer to the data that has been arranged and add it identify the second position which is the value of 50. so that is your q1 same thing for q3 in accordance with the formula it is uh, 7 plus 1 times 3 yeah as you can see here and divide by 4 and that gives us 6 and therefore the sixth position is the value 8 is it correct yeah one, two, three, four, five, six. So the value of Q3 is 40. Now, once we got Q1 is 15, Q3 is 40, in order to find the quartile division, you simply need to subtract the value 40 and the value 15 and divide by 2, and that is our quartile division. Yeah. So the quartile division value here is normally what uh, questions uh, that will be asked. So that is for raw data, okay? We also have another example, still raw data, but this time our N is slightly bigger and it's even. Now compare with the previous example, this example, the data is seven. Our n is 7. It's odd. What we have now is n equals to 12. 
meaning we have an even number of data. So how do you find the quartiles, the lower quartile and upper quartile? So for this case, again, same thing, uh, arrange it in ascending order, that's what you see here. And then same formula though, but this time it's 12 plus one, we get an odd number, 13, which when you divide by four, we get 3.25. So in this case, we just round it to the third item. Yeah. So this one we take sixty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but how? However, uh, if we want to go more specific in terms of the quartiles, there is a formula to calculate it some more. Yeah. But I'm not going to touch into that. Um, we just take it as what we have now. That um what do you say yeah we just round it to the third item but in actuality uh when we get 3.25 there is much more formula involved but since in our syllabus we do not focus on that we just uh we just focus on q1 counted in this way but for the business student there is an extra formula that they have to take note right um, let me uh, confirm this matter with the course coordinator. Then if there's any changes, I will let you guys know. Yeah. So same thing with Q3, we get 9.75. So we take the 10 position after you calculate 12 plus 1 times 3 divided by 4. You get 9.75, which is the 10th item. And that is value of 88. So again, same thing, oops, sorry. Same thing, what we do here is, I really thought I did show it here, but it's not, but basically, um, oh, the question didn't ask to find the quartile deviation, yes or not? Yeah, just lower quartile and upper quartile. Okay, that's it. I thought, I always assume that the question asked for quartile deviation, but apparently not, yeah? So basically this is the answer and I bet you know how to get the quartile deviation, yeah? 88 minus 68 divided by two, if the question asks you to do so. But apparently this question does not, so it's okay, right? Any questions so far, Klaus? Uh, no. Yeah, okay, good. I'm just getting a pillow here for my back. I know we just started our class, but already my back is giving me pain, you know, like like every day I have classes and then weekends also you don't spend time relaxing because a lot of exam papers have to be set this uh, this week. Yeah. Well anyhow. Moving on, the next one is ungrouped frequency distribution. So this is slightly different because you see, we have a frequency value here. Well, the marks are given up here in the darker blue. Number of students is the frequency as you can see here. And CF is the cumulative frequency as we go to each category. And how do we find the Q1 and Q3 for these? So for this particular, type of data, the Q1 is simply get the total, which is 43, because if you total all the frequency, 3 plus 8 plus 16, 7, 5, and 4, that should give you the value of 43. So that's our N, yeah? So the N is 43 plus 1 divided by 4, you get the 11 position, yeah? And that should give you the value of 20. Hmm. Yeah, 11 position exactly on the same value here. So that should give you the value of 20 la, as your, um, how do you call that? Your quartile, first quartile, lower quartile. I'm thinking of something uh, actually, because this data is a uh, this data is with a frequency, right? So I'm thinking whether it should be only 43 divided by four, not plus one. Mm. 
is your notes available this example right now yeah can you double check for me please Like, huh? uh, this one, group data. Sorry? Uh, is this group data? Is it written there as ungroup or group? Oh. Um, this, date, this example available in your notes? Can't recall. Uh. I could check, but I have to close my screen. didn't show any from for this example is not available is it oh yeah oh yeah but it's a bit funny yeah? it's ungrouped that's why that's why when i because it's ungrouped oh i get it i got confused with my own notes sorry guys anyhow Oh, yeah, it's ungrouped. It's stated ungrouped. So this is something you need to be careful about if it's only frequency and it's based on the data. Okay, let me just highlight that to you guys. This data, if you look at this, this is why it's considered as ungrouped. Uh, and that's why we still have to plus one. Yeah. Um, that what uh, make me question uh, the answer just now because uh, why is it plus one when we have you know we have cumulative frequency we have frequency to it but when you want to decide for the usage of the q1 and q3 formula uh, is it we need to plus one or not depends on your x the one that i put an arrow here which means that your data is a single value. It is not uh, based on a based on a category. So that's why we still consider it as an ungroup. But for everyone's uh, information, uh, I haven't seen a uh, question being accessed with only one. Uh, how do you say uh, a frequency with with the data given as just one figure like this, like a single uh, single value frequency distribution, that's what we see here. But um, just to confirm for everyone, yeah, uh, I got confused just now, but this is correct, okay? That means we still use n plus one. Our n is 43 plus one divided by four. And when you calculate it, you get 11 position, which correspond uh, exactly at this value, 11, because remember, uh, when we did the median, we check out from the CF. Yeah, so since we got 11, our reference is there, but our Q1 is the value 20, not the 11th value, but the value 20, where, where it is corresponding to. So same thing with Q3. Uh, we have 3 times 43 plus 1 divided by 4, you get 33. And of course, uh, check out from the cumulative frequency, 33, the best value to take is this value, which is bigger than 33. And therefore, our Q3 is 40. I hope that uh, explains it. Um, but then, as I was mentioning, as I mentioned just now, uh, this kind of format of a question has not been asked in the final exam, um, to my knowledge. 
um, the format will not uh, be focusing on a single value data, yeah, uh, especially for question number one. Uh, what is focused most of all is the raw data that we did earlier. And of course, uh, as what you see on the screen now, which we call as the group frequency distribution. Now, um, the formula for group frequency distribution, because it is group, yeah, we have Q1 and Q3, or hello, Vera. Mm -hmm. So notice that the formula Q1 is n divided by 4, and Q3 is 3n divided by 4. So slightly different now. We don't have the n plus 1. <laughs> it's okay, Farrah. N, uh, n is simply n divided by 4 to tell us the 25th position, and the Q3 is the 75th, uh, 75th position, which is 3 times n divided by 4, because 3 over 4 is representing 75%, uh, right? And 1 over 4 is 25%. Now, another thing you can see here is the formula for Q3 and uh, Q1 and Q3. The formula is longer, but it shouldn't be um, difficult to remember because if you look at it clearly, it is the same as the formula for median. It's just that the median, um, the value here, this part where my pointer is, it is n divided by 2 for median. Yeah. But for Q1, it is n divided by 4. Q3 is 3n divided by 4. So basically, the formula to find Q1 or Q3 is the same as finding the, the formula for if finding the value for median. Yeah. The LM we use in median. So Q1 and Q3. This is the class size, yeah, the C. The FQ1, FQ3 is the frequency. And the summation FQ1 minus 1 is referring to all the cumulated frequency until up to the, to the uh, category that we have chosen for Q1 and Q3. Yeah, so to find the quartile, yeah, to find the quartile 1 and quartile 2, it is quite straightforward, uh, similar to the median. Is there any question for now? No, no. Yeah. Okay, good. Right. So let's look at an example. This should help you to understand the formula better. Basically, um, as you see, um, this data, we have been using it all throughout our discussion in chapter 1 and 2. And we have the frequency, which already shown to you to get the cumulative frequency as well. Yeah, so 3 and then plus 4, you get 7, plus 5, 12, 12 plus 6, you get 18, 18 plus 2, you get 20. So in order to compute the quartiles, first of all, um, we have to identify what is Q1, meaning total 20 divided by 4. Well, for Q1, right, you get the fifth position. So the fifth position, you have to check out from the cumulative frequency. Three is too small for five. Therefore, the best value is seven, which correspond to 62.5 to 65.5. And for the Q3 is three times 20 divided by four, you get 15 position. Of course, the best value is the value 18, which is just nice because it's bigger than 12. So the value 18 is the best and therefore it corresponds to 68.5 to 71.5. So these two are what we say our um, class boundaries. So what you do is notice the Q1, 62.5 is the LM. 3 is the class size, yeah, uh, 63, 6. If you minus 65 to 63, you get 2, isn't it? But actually, it's 3 because when we have a gap, 62 and 63 here, we must use the 0.5, right? So 65.5 minus 62.5 is the value of 3. That's why the class size is a 3. 
and 4 is the value of the frequency, 20 over 4, because n divided by 4, and minus 3, 3 here we got from the value below the 7, meaning all the cumulative, cumulated frequency below the category that we have chosen. So when you calculate that, you get your Q1 as 64. So do the same process of Q3. You can see 68.5 plus 3, the size. 6 is the frequency. And then 3 times 20 over 4, because that's our N, minus 12. Because 12 is just below the category we have chosen. That's the cumulated frequency below the category we have chosen for Q3. And when you calculate that, you get 7. Any question regarding this? So if uh, the first, first one, uh, 20 divided 4. Yeah. So if, like, um, if the, let's say it's a fourth position, we just take the 7. What do you mean by fourth position? Because uh, over there, it's a fifth, right? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I get you. Okay. Um. Maybe I should not put the fifth position, but it's it's okay because you see it's based on the accumulated value. Accumulated. You see my pointer it where it is at. So the fifth is is in such that we have first, second, third, until 20th position. So when I put fifth position here, it doesn't mean one, two, three, four, five. It refers to the fifth position based on the total that we have here, because here is three is too small compared to the five. So we take seventh, which is oh. bigger than the fifth. So that's why it corresponds to this value, this category. So same thing like 15, yeah? 15 position, we check out from the cumulative frequency. We can't take um, 20 because it's way too big because we have 18. And we cannot take 12 because 12 is too small compared to 15. So the best value is 18. Oh, okay. Got it. Ah, Noel? Yeah, good question. Because sometimes, um, sometimes I cannot, um, you know, visualize... Because uh, when when a person explains something, I I have this problem of visualizing uh, what is it that student uh, not uh, sure or what do they not understand from my explanation. So if we're doing face to face, I'm able to see it from your face uh, facial reaction. Like when you start frowning, then I know all oh, this student doesn't understand. And I would focus on that or I could directly ask the student, uh, what is it that they do not understand? But when we're doing online like this, um, I need you guys to ask me, yeah? Let me know what is it that you don't understand so that I could, you know, focus on that and be more attentive to the way I explain it, yeah? So I hope you understand now, Noel, and of course to Calvin and uh, Sarah also, you also understand how it's, um, how it's calculated, how we identify the position of the value. Is it clear? Yeah? No, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ferret, okay. Yeah. Okay, how about you, Calvin? Yeah. Okay. So if that's clear, that's it. That's about the quartile. We have done the range. We have last week, we did the range last week. And today we covered the quartiles. Uh, just to inform everyone, uh, for the business students, yeah, I noticed... Uh, exam question, assessment, coursework. Uh, quartiles is very popular, yeah? I mean, it's always asked for them. But for computing students, um, I really have to check your past year exam question again. But um, if I compare with the 
uh, what do you call that, the diploma students who are doing computing courses as well. Um, questions on quartile is not so much. Questions on range also not so much. But what is asked is basically on the topic of uh, standard deviation, which is partly the one that we're going to do next. Yeah. So let us just finish this part and then, um, then I would give you guys a break. Yeah. So what is variance? Now, this is also a measure of dispersion, um, but basically it is defined as the average of the square of the difference between the individual values and the arithmetic mean in the distribution. Now, this definition is basically explaining the formula, yeah, but, but the norm or what uh, people normally say, what is variance? is the square of the standard deviation in the distribution in such that it refers to the standard deviation. It's just that the variance is the square of the value of the standard deviation. I will explain the standard deviation later on. So in a way, variance is simply you squared the value of the standard deviation. But what is standard deviation? Okay, standard deviation is the measurement of your data. How much does it clustered away or how much does it spread out from the value of the mean? Like for example, if let's say in a test paper, the average mark is 50 and say your standard deviation is 20, that means your data is the marks that is obtained within that class, your average is 50, right? If your standard deviation is 20, that means your data are spread out from the value of 30, because 50 minus 20, you get 30, and 50 plus 20 is 70. So that means your data is spread out from the range 20 to 70, sorry, 30 to 70. It means how far does the data spread out from the value of the mean? So there is an importance of knowing the standard deviation. So in a way, when we did the range, we only specified the biggest and the smallest, yeah? But when we did the quartiles, we are being more specific. We go to 25% and 75%. But when we do the standard deviation, we are more accurate. Notice the accuracy of the calculation. Standard deviation is more, um, how do you say, more accurate as the measure of dispersion as compared to quartiles and range. And that is why standard deviation is a value that is used in most other statistical calculation. I hope that makes sense to all of you. Yeah. Um, Let's look at the formula. Now, for the in terms of the variance, which is the squared of the standard deviation, there are two symbols we use or parameters we use. For variance of population, the notation is sigma squared for population, okay? And for sample is S squared. So this is important. You have to check out the question whether it's a population or a sample. And if it's a population, it is expected that you use this notation to represent variance and sample is S squared. Now, some students, they are smart because they are unable to remember this. Yeah. So they write the full sentence <laughs> instead of using the notation. Yeah. So you still get marks for that, but um, it's best to write using the simple as uh, given here. Right, the computation of variance, uh, this is the formula. Um, let me give it to you guys. And as you can see, there are two types, yeah? One is for ungrouped data, just like what we've been doing all this while. We look at ungrouped data and group data. And not only that, you have to check out the formula for population and sample. So that's why you see for population, the notation we use is sigma squared population, the formula is different from the sample. Notice that? Because the sample, we have n minus one, yeah? And sample variance is S squared. 
Yeah, um, just to let everybody uh, know, um, because uh, how to say this uh, population and group. Yeah, I'm sure in your notes there are plenty more. You know, there's uh, your notes. The formula are written in a different manner. I think. Yeah. Um, if I, if my if what I recall correctly, la, yeah. Um, I've summarized the formula for variance in this manner because this is uh, the formula that I would encourage you to use. Because if I'm not mistaken, in your notes there is extra formula that is an alternative for you to use, but I do not recommend you to use it because it requires a lot more calculation. But it may be it's similar to the ones that you have learned in your studies last time. So if you're comfortable using that other formula, you can. But this is my recommendation. Yeah, to calculate the variance, first you need to check is it ungrouped data or group data, and then you need to check its population or sample. Then you choose the one that is uh, correctly answering the question. So this one is ungrouped for population for sample, and this one is group for population and sample. Now, basically, the variance formula is the same as the standard deviation formula. I immediately jump here because I just want to show you the formula. Notice that it's the same. It's just that here is standard deviation. Huh? It's the same. It's just that it is with a square root. Do you notice that? And the population for standard deviation is denoted with a sigma only, no squared, and the sample is the S only. So, is that clear, class? Of course, in exam, you can check out the, I mean, the formula is um, given. So, do be careful in the selection of the formula because there is marks assigned for the correct formula. And of course, I will show you uh, very um, soon how to do the calculation. Okay. So, any question with regards to the form formula, though? Um, okay. Okay. Uh, no problem. Huh? Okay. Just going back to the slides in terms of the explanation of standard deviation, because the variance. You see, it's very similar formula, variance and standard deviation. It's just that the variance has the square root. Eh, sorry, the variance has the squared. And standard deviation is when you square root the value of the variance, you get a value. And that is why standard deviation is much more usage. Yeah, And we define it as the square root of the variance, which is presented as sigma for population and S for sample, right? And I've explained about the, the meaning of standard deviation verbally just now, right? About uh, standard deviation is the calculation of how much the measurement, basically, of how much does it disperse, uh, spread out from the uh, value of the average, the value of the mean. And that's why it's normally used, yeah? Business people, politicians, educators, yeah? factories, especially in the research and development, they use it. And you may ask, yeah, now, hey, why is it I'm doing computing? I'm supposed to learn programming. But you must realize, as a person who's, uh, you're going to work in a computing industry, Computing is actually business. And all this knowledge about statistics is very important for business people. Yeah. So let's get a move on in the calculation. Are you all still okay? Not tired? I uh, don't know. Do you need a break? Still okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, we just continue. Yeah, just finish this off and then we'll have a break. And then um, I'm going to start with chapter three. Yeah, just a bit of chapter three, uh, just to follow what we have in our course plan. 
for weekly basis okay so example 19 shows us um the calculation earlier uh salary per day for all six employees of a small company calculate the variance and standard deviation so in order to calculate this now take note salary per day for all six employees so definitely this is a population yeah so we should approach this question to calculate the variance and standard deviation as a population why because of the word all that means this is this data is based on the population of all the six employees of a, of a small company. Yeah, so these are the salary, which um, already obtained the total. So in order to calculate the variance and standard deviation, we need to get the x squared. Yeah, uh, that's our n. n refers to how many items we have. And if you calculate all this, you see 29.5, you squared it, 16.5, you squared it, and you total all the values. Unfortunately, I didn't write it here. Can you double check for me, please? Do you get, when you squared all this value, I think it's correct, though. You should get 5,924.6. Yeah? Do you agree? Uh, well done. Yeah, my coffee very bitter. Is it correct, Farah? Are you counting also? Oh uh, yeah, correct. Yeah. I hope you know how to calculate it. Yeah, it's simply twenty nine point five. You squared it. Same thing for each of the values here, and then you plus all of it. You should get five thousand nine hundred twenty four point six. Correct. Uh, um, what is it? Uh, Noel. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So when you put the values here, this is the summation x squared. So that's the 5,924.6. Divide by 6. Why? Because that's our n, okay? Even though I put capital letter here, it's corresponding to the 6 here. So this is the formula for ungrouped data. Just to highlight that this value is equivalent to summation x over n so everything you squared it same meaning now yeah so it's basically 177 because total all the x divided by six and we get this yeah to the power two oops i can use the highlighter huh? and we get this value yeah so when you calculate this what answer did you get have you calculated it? Make sure do the brackets, you squared it, and then from that you subtract with the value 5924.6 divided by 6. Can you calculate the value, please? Uh, 9788.73. Okay, so let's check it out. Um, is it what did you say just now? Is it 117 or was it different? I didn't get your what you said just now, Noel. Is it the same answer? Noel, that is way, way different from my answer. No, how come you got different answer? Can you recalculate it again, please? Make sure you do the ones in the brackets first, 177 over 6, divide, squared it, and then the 5,924.6 divided by 6. Is my answer not correct? Kelvin, did you calculate it? Kelvin, did you try and calculate it? Oh, yeah, 117. Uh, yeah, uh, 117.1833. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, need to practice, okay? Need to practice how to calculate it. Yeah, if you don't practice, then, um, well, you 
yeah as long as you try now and then you know how to calculate it so, and during exam be very careful yeah double check now that is the value of the variance remember at sigma squared that's the value of the variance so if i want to get the standard deviation i need to just square root the same value you see here to give me 10.825 and that's the answer for the standard deviation is that clear uh, yes. Uh, okay. okay, good. So we go on to the next example. Can you try this out, please? Okay, my dear. But remember, this is a sample, so it's a different formula. Try it out. So did you get the x squared already? The summation. Yeah. Yes. What do you get? 20,100. 20, yes, very good. Now again, sample. Take note, I've highlighted it here because it consists of five data values only. It, the word all or every value is not stated in the question. So it is... Well, anyway, in this question, it's already stated the word sample. So, you know, it's a sample. The formula, as you can see, this is the one. For ungrouped data, okay, we haven't touched on group data yet. We only look for ungrouped data. Right? So, can you put it into the formula? Uh, the n is five, right? Yes, correct. How do you identify the n? Is because we have one, two, three, four, five. So that's the n. Yeah. Uh, one five seven point eight. Let's check. Huh? So you should have put all the values accordingly. Ah, 157.8, that is your variance. Therefore, your standard deviation, you just have to square root the same formula since we already calculated 157.8. Square root it, you should get the answer as 12.56. Okay. Okay. Right. So good. Now the next one we're going to do. I hope all everyone is okay. Yeah. The next one we're going to do is to find the variance for a frequency distribution if it represents population and sample. This is just because I want you guys to make sure to know the difference between the formula for population and sample. And if you look at this example, um, it is a group data because you see here, here is group, right? I mean, 20 to 22, 23 to 25, it's considering group. So in order to do this, we have to find all this information. And apparently in exam, you must show this table, yeah? So, 
uh, because there's marks assigned to it, like the calculation of fx, the calculation of x, fx squared. Um, it would be good to show it. Some students, they just show the final answer. Uh, it's okay. I mean, if you did that, it's okay. Uh, just that if you got all the answers correct, then it's fine. But if there is any values that you uh, write mistakenly, I will not be able to check from your working to ver verify that you did try to calculate it and might be able to give you a bit of, you know, some marks at least. But anyhow, um, to write the table during the assessment is good because, you know, you are making, you know, um, an organized kind of work, yeah? So first we need to get the midpoint, which I've explained last week. How do you get the midpoint? And then this is basically our X. So F times X, calculate all that. We also need to calculate Fx squared. So basically Fx is um, the multiplication of F and X, and Fx squared is once you get the 63, you multiply again with 21, and that would give you these values. And the total are all given there. Did you get the same answer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good. So once you got all the same answer, now check out the formula used. For population, notice that, because remember, this is the calculation for variance up here, not standard deviation. For variance so that is why we do not square root it so you can see for population this is the formula for sample this is the formula okay so based on the values that we have calculated just now just put all the values in and when you calculate it you should get this answer is it the same Okay. Is it okay? Did you get the same answer? Yes? Okay. Okay. So this is an extra example. Um, I don't think it's available in your notes, yes or not? Is it? I don't think it is. But it's a good time to have a break, everyone. So let's have a break. Can I give you 15 minutes break? Okay. okay. Yes. So we'll have a break and I might, um, well, go through this or we might go to chapter three because this one is not, it's just extra. And well, yeah, see how it goes after uh, nine, around nine, 15, uh, 10, 15. I see you guys back. Okay. See you guys in a bit.
Sarah, your microphone is on. Oh, okay.
Okay, hello. Are you all back in? Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the example I've decided just to discuss just this one. Well, I'm going to go fast with it though. It's very um, long. Very long. Huh? The calculation is very long. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know because of the many data that you see here. Yeah, if you look at it, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is not very practical. But I tell you, ten years ago, questions like this was asked to its students, and they only have two hours. Can you believe that? Questions in the past are much more tougher compared to questions now, because now, um, inform to examiners to set question, not to give repeated things many times which is logical you should not be giving repeated things many times because it's just repeated work isn't it so uh, for this question uh, we are to find the mean median and standard deviation for this data and as you can see <laughs> yeah it is very long uh, notice that uh, i think that's the key point that i want to highlight in case when you have a gap you see, when I go back to the original question, yeah, you have zero, uh, 0 to 9 and then 10 to 19, there is a gap. So what happens to the value 0? So this is what apparently you must show, that the class boundary is starting from negative 0 0.5 to 9.5. But this is not of concern anymore, uh, but it may affect the value of your x. Notice that? Yeah. We have 4.5 because if you start, if you didn't put negative 0 0.5, you may have your x here as equal to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about well, 0 to 9.5. It will affect the value of your x. Yeah. So when you calculate, it's a bit long the process. So I'll just let me share with you the answers. Uh, it doesn't matter if you want to copy or not because. Um, uh, obviously, it's not in your notes, but I just want to share with you. Those are all the calculation after you have calculated the summation of the frequency, meaning the total of all the frequency here. Uh, summation of the fx, you get, that means the total of all the fx here, and summation of fx squared, yeah, the total of all the frequency x squared there. And um, when you have long category like this, the chances of you making careless mistake is there, isn't it? So, and some of the values are a bit, you know, tedious, you know, the 0.75 and 2.25 uh, here. So it's a bit tedious. So basically the answer is a bit longer also and a bigger value. Also shown here is the cumulative frequency. Yeah, which we, I hope all of you know about it now. So the mean is basically just divide, yeah, the mu, put the formula to get 55.5 marks, and then the median, yeah, how do we identify that? Well, I didn't put the, how do you say that, the uh, calculation of m divided by 2, but if you go here, 110 divided by 2 is roughly about 55, right? So 55 is somewhere in between here. So 42 is too small. So we take the 65, which correspond to 49.5 to 59.5. And that is why uh, we have 49.5 here. And you get 55.152 marks. And the standard deviation, just put all the values into the formula. Take note, summation of f is 110. And we get the value of standard division as 119.91. So is that clear? Any question, class? Any question? Uh, no. Uh, no. OK. So if no question, I'm going to stop here because the rest are practically, um, well, all the slides here. I've already planned for our, you can see at the side here, I've already planned for discussion for tutorial tomorrow. 
Yeah, so let me close this um, and I'm going to show you the next slide for the day. And also, I want to show the form B for today. This class. I thought I already opened the form B. Let's see. This is the cost plan, right? And if you look at form B, A. Oh. Today's week three or week four? Uh, week three. Three. Oh, okay. We have finished the syllabus, basically, the coverage for today. Look at that. Right. Because the probability, we still can cover the probability next week and also week four and five. Am I going too fast with this chapter, class? Uh, no. Uh, uh, no. Just, just a few formulas on there. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Right. That's why. Right. When I look at the plan, yeah, from the form B, you can see that whoa how long is the probability this one week together with next week mm, we have more time for probability then but you see in week six also we still have probability probability distribution also whoa until here week eight and then estimation and confidence interval until here oh it goes all the way until week 12 and then we have regression and correlation, just one. Oh, I know why, because we have plenty of time for your subject, because we don't do the time series. We don't do the financial mathematics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we still have about half an hour now. Um, do you want, let me stop the recording then. Where is my? Because it's still recording. Yeah. So in accordance to the form B, we have finished. We are week three. So it's done. So next week, you can start straight away start with chapter three. And we have two weeks, week four and week five to cover that. Yeah. So what do you want to do another half an hour? Would you like to, you know, try out some questions, which... My plan is to do it, um, well, plan is to do it next week. <laughs> hey, no, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. Well, class, we still have half an hour. Would you like to do this question? No. Huh? Yes or no? Can I stop? <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, we'll try to do this for half an hour, and then we'll see. I mean... I'll let you try and do it first. I have the solution though, but I just want you to try it out and then you can check with the answer that I have. Can or not, class? Okay. Huh? Hello? Uh, what again, miss? <laughs> well, this question you can see on the screen now, can? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we can we do this question and we'll discuss it so we'll use the half an hour we still have about half an hour can can uh, yeah. yeah so we'll do this and then we discuss it can okay but i want you to try it out first because you know by by trying it out you'll know which part that is not similar to my answer or i might be wrong okay but i think i'll Already double check the answer, it should be correct. But try it out first. Because, like, when you have this question, you have to decide first of all is it 
a population or a sample? Which formula need you use for the standard deviation? And then, of course, um, to construct the less than community frequency distribution, this one you could do, and the calculation of median and first quartile. And then, oh, there's no stand. Oh, draw the histogram and use it to estimate the mode. Maybe if you don't have the graph paper and you're not able to draw the histogram, it's okay. I'm going to show you, but I would prefer that you do part one, part two, and part three, everything about calculation. And then we'll discuss in how long do you think you need? Uh, 25. I don't huh? I guess. Uh, Sorry? 25 minutes. Oh, 25 minutes. Okay. Um, I'll still be here though. So if you have any question, just ask. Okay? Okay. All right. So carry on doing it. Don't go and masak Maggie or something like that. Huh? <laughs> I mean, okay. if you're hungry, go ahead. But try and finish it within 25 minutes. I'll be here. I just keep quiet.
Amis. Yes, you finish. Is that Noel? Uh, yeah. Um, the yeah. question two, I don't understand. Oh, it's just practically, okay, yeah, this is how the question normally asks. It's practically just asking you to create the cumulative frequency, meaning from this table, you just create the CF. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. When it says uh, frequency distribution, that means you just need to construct the CF and then, you know, calculate cumulatively like the ones that I've shown in the notes. So that is what it means. Yeah. Oh, okay. Normally, it's about two marks at this one. This question is normally about two marks just for you to create the cumulative frequency. I'll show you in the solution later on. But good, you are, Sir Noel. OK, you understand what to do now, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah, because I yeah. Con confuse the word yeah. Yeah. less than. Yeah, yeah normally oh. students ask. Yes, Farah? Oh, Calvin, why yes. The, why the lecture note in the classroom different from the lecture note here? Lecture notes in the classroom, the one that you have, mm -hmm. with the one that I share as the slide, mm -hmm. I change a bit here and there. Huh? I change a bit. Is it okay? Huh? Change a bit? What do you mean different? You mean this question is not in your notes, is it? No, the like, uh, entire lecture notes different. Is that how different? Huh? I thought it's the same. I check it's what do you mean entire? Oh, it's just there's not it's not power it's not PowerPoint. It's just all white with words. Uh, yeah, video. Yes, um, correct, Calvin. Because this slide I prepare on my own. That one is given by KL by right. I'm supposed to show the lecture notes using the PDF. Do you prefer me to show using the PDF or with the PowerPoint? Huh? PowerPoint. PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah. PowerPoint. Yeah, that's why I you prepare the know. PowerPoint on my own. In KL, I don't know how they prepare. Uh, I mean other branches. Yeah. yeah. Do you want it with PDF? Huh? No, Do you want uh, me to show the lecture notes using PDF? No. Oh. Because if I use the PDF, uh, I have to write write down every step. And for me to draw straight line, I'm not very good with it. So I prefer to prepare it on PowerPoint slide because it's more organized, isn't it? I think it's organized. Do you think it's organized? Why isn't PowerPoint slide in the classroom? In the, you want the PowerPoint slide? Yeah. Is it not enough with the recorded video shared in the Google Classroom? Oh, we can use it during class also. Huh? I didn't get you. Ah, uh, never Is mind. It... <laughs> okay. You all finished already? Still in question three. Okay, so. Uh, let me know when you finish so that we can discuss. And I think that's all for today. Because tomorrow we're going to continue with more examples on what we have done. So that, you know, yeah. Or maybe I think I will select uh, one, uh, what do you call that? The tutorial question for you to try out. Yeah. And share it in the WhatsApp. So carry on. Let me know when you're done.
okay. Are you done? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why not we discuss this, yeah? Let me show it as um, full screen. So first of all, uh, this is a sample. You see the word sample there? So definitely you have to approach this question as a sample. And again, uh, the data, it's about the pulse rates and there is a gap. So therefore, we have to consider the class boundaries and uh, we're going to compute the mean and standard deviation first. So all this must be shown, yeah? Uh, so practically what I'm showing you is <clears throat> what is expected of you to show during uh, the writing of your answer. So it would be best if you write the table. Now notice here, I haven't put the class boundary accordingly, but... Um, especially the calculation of the median, it must be using the class boundary for the pulse rate. So these are the frequency. I hope you got the same for the uh, fx and fx squared. And you should notice by now that I always use, um, in fact, the marking scheme also normally use uh, fx squared, the calculation of fx squared rather than the other formula that you would notice in your notes. Yeah, So this uh, is much more recommended because it's easier to calculate rather than using the mean each time you have to minus it. It's very tedious. So I hope these are your totals. Yeah, Summation fx is 4,390 and summation fx squared is 331,075. I hope you get the same answer. Did you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So getting the mean, put it into the formula here. You will get 4,390 divided by 60. 60 because that's your total frequency once you have added all these values that my pointer is pointing now, which gives us the value of 60. All right. So when you calculate that, you should get 73.17. Now, this question did not ask you to interpret or comment, isn't it? So I didn't do the same thing. I didn't comment. So if the question didn't ask you to comment, do not write it. Yeah, because it just takes so much of your time. And the next question is to get the standard deviation. Um, by right, it should be S, only S, yeah, but I don't know why I put it as SD. It stands for standard deviation, but the correct symbol is the S because it's a sample. And this is the formula of um, sample standard deviation. Um, well, practically, it's just that I change, um, instead of putting the N below the summation fx squared, I put it as 1 over N and over n minus one. Now this is where a lot of students get confused. They think that the n is one, two, three, four, five, six. So they put six here. Definitely your answer will be so different. So the correct is the n is referring to summation of f, which is 60. So when you put all the values correctly, you should get 12.94. Is that correct? Did you get the same? Oh, yeah. Oh, good, good. How about you, uh, Noel? Answer only two decimal places. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many decimal places did you put, Kelvin? Four, I think? I, I put four. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I put only two. Uh, if you can put four, then put four. Except for currency, make sure you put that two decimal is enough. But the best thing is to put up to four. Some branches, they insist on six decimal places. So um, it's not a real concern about how many decimal places, actually, unless the question specified, OK, you must write your answer up to six decimal places. Normally, the question doesn't specify that. But uh, to be on the safe side, it's best to put four. Yeah. So, But unfortunately, I put here only two. As I said before, uh, four is best. Okay, already. All right. Uh, Noel, you got the same answer? Uh, almost. I forgot oh, oh. to square it. Oh, you didn't square it. Yet. It's okay. How about you, um, Tara? Did you get the answer? Yeah. Oh, good, good. 
Okay, so this is like basically about seven to eight marks, okay? All this working is about seven to eight marks. And all these are necessary for you to show. So here you don't see any interpretation because the question didn't ask you to do that. No comment required. Now, the second part, this is where you asked me, um, uh, Noel. So this is what it meant by the cumulative distribution, cumulative frequency distribution, whereby starting from the lower class boundary, which is 50.5. So we're using less than 50.5. It started off with zero. And then it keep on increasing. As you can see, this is the upper class boundary of the first class, 60.5. So less than 60.5, we have up to 10. And then you keep on adding until it's 60. Now in exam, you only need to show this part. Yeah, so no point of writing this other part here again. This is because I just want to show you uh, what is what it meant, isn't it? I mean, how did we derive this answer? So in exam, you only required to show this part, the one that I circle in red. Yeah, so I hope uh, it is clear. Yeah, Don't waste your time writing this again. And it's not even marked. Yeah? What is important is this part must be seen. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So this one mm -hmm. have to use the boundary. Yes, this one have to use the boundary. Yeah, this one. Uh, some examiners. Yeah, uh, examiners means the person who set the exam. So that is uh, the marking scheme that was shared with every branches. So some of them are very particular. They want okay, um, only when students write this way, then it will be accepted, uh, accepted to be allocated marks. But some examiner, they are okay. So the best thing is to be on the right side. Lah. I mean, like the proper way is this. Lah. Yeah, so make sure you, you write it in this manner. Right? Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, the next question is to calculate the median. So based on the class boundaries, um, it's not supposed to be written this manner. I mean, it should be written in terms of the class boundary, right? Um, of course, uh, the most important thing is the cumulative frequency. And since it's a group data, we have 60 data divided by 2. That gives us the 30th position. So 30th position based on the CF, uh, 28 is too small. So the best thing is to take 44. So 44 is corresponding to the median class of 71 to 80 because notice here it's less than 80.5. So that means it's 70.5 to 80.5. So I didn't write it down here. I should have written it as 70.5 to 80.5 that's more correct all right and then putting all the values into the formula for the median i hope you still remember 70.5 referring to the lower class limit 10 is the size 16 is the frequency so if you check back the question 16 is the value of the frequency of this category 60 divided by 2 the n divided by 2 and minus 28 which is this value so when you calculate that, you should get 71.75. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no question on this, yeah. So the next one is the, if I'm not mistaken, the quartiles. So quartile one is 60 divided by four. So we get 15 position. So 15 position, 10 is too small, right? Still referring to the cumulative frequency. 10 is too small. So we take 28. So 28, that means corresponding to 61 to 70. But actually, it is 60.5 to 70.5. Okay, should have written that instead of writing uh, the, the original data. So when you put into the formula, you notice that I'm using 60.5 plus 10 is the size. 18 is the frequency of this category. You can check out from the original question just now. 60 divided by 4, because our n is 60, minus 10. Where do I get the 10 from? It's from here, directly below the one that we have chosen. It's 10. Yeah. So when you calculate it, you get 63.28. Is that clear? Okay. 
Yeah. And of course, uh, the last question is uh, to get the mode from the histogram. So here uh, I did say no need to draw the histogram but if you got the time later and you have some graph paper you can try and sketch it and you can see uh, here i label frequency because all the size of the histogram or the bars are the same so no need to change the labeling of the y-axis the x-axis is the pulse rate you can also write class boundaries uh, the title is important histogram showing the pulse rates of a sample of 60 females and then we identify the highest one the highest one is this one right oh so the highest one is uh, this bar yeah and from this bar this end goes to there and this end goes to the one previous to it the intersection point draw a straight line and like I said, if this was drawn on actual graph paper and when you read the answer, it would be 68.5. So normally when students are asked to draw on the graph paper, um, of course, the ideal answer is 68.5. But some students, you know, because pencils, um, in terms of the lines, how you draw it or how you connect from this end to the next end, the values may differ in such that you might get 68 exactly or uh, 67 point uh, 67 point hang on 68 exactly or sometimes some students they got 69 so it's accepted between uh, a difference of 0 0.5 like that 0 0.5 yeah so uh, don't worry if there is a question asking you to draw the graph then the value may differ by 0.5 so it's still accepted but the actual or ideal answer is 68.5 um i got a very interesting question uh just to, over the weekend there's one student asking assuming uh, i draw a straight line here just for your in, in well not a good idea let me erase that uh the student asks miss I couldn't answer the, this one tutorial question. Apparently, the drawing of the tutorial, assuming that this particular bar doesn't exist. Can? It doesn't exist. This one don't have. So how do you find the mode? So I think I did explain in class, but I'm not sure. This line, this yellow line, this extra red yellow line. Okay. What did I do? Huh? Is this a different question? Yeah, that's a different question. That means this line, you must draw all the way down here. If let's say this bar doesn't exist, can, then this one still go here. But this line here go all the way and connect. If this one that I draw X doesn't exist, then in order to find the mode, because this is the highest, this is still the highest, right? So you still have to connect from this end to this end and this end to the one below here because there's nothing next to it so the the best is to connect downwards here so the intersection point you have to draw lah, down and get the mode also is that clear oh okay yeah, yeah. okay so that's all for today i'll see you tomorrow um in the meantime for tomorrow class can you take a picture of this question? Or do you want me to snap it and give it to the, um, I mean, share it in the WhatsApp later on, can or not? Uh, okay. All the questions that I want you to do for tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'll see you then. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Bye.